Hello everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today, in tube lab number 12, we're going to learn how to identify tubes made in North America. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, this is a huge topic and no one single person is going to have all the answers. I'm going to share some of what I know and if you're just starting out in tubes, consider this a primer. And if you're an old hand, maybe you'll pick up a few things. Feel free to add your own tips to the comment section at the bottom. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe. We're looking at North America, that's Canada and the U.S. together, because many of those manufacturers cooperated with each other, and some of them even had manufacturing plants in both countries. Number one in tube identification is to sort like types. So if you haven't been to tubes, you're trying to identify, go through them and pull out all the tubes that look the same and make a pile of them. In this case, these all look like 6SN7s. Don't worry about whether they're GTAs or GTBs. Just get a pile of them. Get all the power tubes out, make a pile of them. Get all the small signal tubes out, make a pile. And then go through those piles and say, okay, that looks like a 12AX7. And it is. Make a pile of 12AX7s. Oh, that's, that's a 12... What is that? I'm not even sure what that is. Let's try one over here. That's a 12AT7. Make a pile of 12AT7s. Okay, that's the first step. Get them sorted. The next step is to have a good look at the tubes. I start with the glass envelope. And here at the top is a great, a great label. 6SN7GTB. Next, I look at the plates themselves. In this case, we've got a tall black T-plate with five rivets. See those slots there? Those are the rivets. And two ribs. See those little creases? Angled. And now this is uh, an indicator that this is a Sylvania 6SN7, but we don't have positive confirmation yet because it's rebranded Baldwin organs. But we have a good idea that that, in fact, is what it is. And in a minute, we'll go even deeper on that tube. After you've done the, the glass and the plates, have a look at the getter. See if we can find one that's nice and visible. Now, if you've got a chrome dome, you certainly have a getter at the top. So let's take a look at the getter. Now, this is a large circular getter, raised and I would call that a large halo getter with a chrome dome. You can also have getters on the side, double side, bottom, double bottom. And we'll see some more of those later on. But that often helps to distinguish a tube. If you see white on the glass, that's a sure sign that you've got a tube in which the vacuum has been breached. And that means the tube is on its way out. Even if it tests okay, it's on its way out. These go. This is actually a garbage bin of tubes. And this goes in the garbage bin. Okay. The next step is to start to confirm what we actually have. And your best friend for this is called the EIA code which is short for Electronic Industries Association. And TubeMaze has a good list available on their website. European tubes didn't have EIA codes and instead used a common manufacturing code that was more detailed. The best part of the EIA code is that it identifies the original manufacturer. For example, 312 was Sylvania, 274 was RCA, and 188 was GE. 
often attached to the manufacturing code with a date code. Let's take a quick look at a rebranded tube and see if we can figure out the manufacturer. So we were just looking at what looked to us like a 6SN7GTB. All the indicators are that it's Sylvania. Confirmation will come when we find a manufacturing code. 312. There we go, Sylvania. Now, if we didn't have the manufacturing code, we would also be able to look at another Sylvania tube of the same generation and be able to confirm it by just comparing the various components as we just talked about. And in this case, it's got another code beside the manufacturing code that says 926. Now, out of that, it's tough to get a date code. So that might not mean anything. Sylvania may have started using a date code that's hard to decipher. And we'll see other date codes that make more sense. Sometimes you'll have a stocking number, a code that is particular just to a factory. Maybe that's a factory identifier. Just ignore numbers that we can't figure out. Now, the reason vintage tube identification is often so difficult to pin down is manufacturers sold in, to, in bulk to each other. For example, RCA would sell a tube to Sylvania that Sylvania didn't make, and Sylvania would rebrand it. More confusing, equipment manufacturers like HP would want their own brand name on the tubes in their own equipment even if they never built a single tube. And it gets worse. Retailers and resellers wanted the same thing. So you'll see lots of rebrands by large retailers. Now, some rebrands are easy to tell apart. Others take more research and experience. An example of a difficult brand is CBS Hytron. They both made tubes and rebranded in equal measure. A simple rule to remember is if a tube is branded Sylvania and it looks exactly like an RCA, then it is an RCA. Don't let the name game fool you. Keep your eye on the tube. Okay, let's have a look at a bunch of tubes and see if we can figure out what they are. So these are both 6V6s, new in the box. So new old stock, new in the box. And because it's just a 6V6, not a 6V6G or GT, it is a metal tube. So here we go. We've got Sylvania's logo on it. Sylvania clearly labeled on it. And ah, we've got an orange stop sign saying 6V6. So the first two company that I'm aware of that used the orange stop sign was RCA. Now other companies since duplicated the stop sign. Much in the way today companies will try to sneak in a similar logo to a popular brand. And we got a little bit of an orange smudge here and maybe something was up here as well and it's gone. So now we have an indicator that this may well be an RCA and we luckily and we don't have a manufacturing code. There's a few a few product numbers here and there but none of them seem to be a manufacturing code. All we know is that it was made in the USA and it's a 6v6. So here's another new in the box tube. And let's have a look at it. There's our orange stop sign. Almost identical. RCA 6v6. Now let's compare the tubes. They're a little different than a glass tube, but it's the same thing. We compare them. So here, the waist at the top here is a little crease. Can you see that? They both are identical. Stop signs are identical. Now, when comparing tubes, don't forget to compare the base. Line up the keyways on an octal or on a nine pin, a miniature. Line up the gap and now you can have a better look. In fact, we should do one of those in a second. But let's look at the octals. The bases are identical. Everything is the same. So this is a rebranded RCA.
Okay. What have we got next, Jimmy? We've got some small signal tubes. So here's the Sylvania. It's a 12AX7. Let's take a look at the plate quickly. Plates are king. So I call this a gray corrugated plate. Notice that it's got six small slits in it, so six small rivets. And because there's a matched pair of them, this is a 12AX7, a dual triode. There's two identical plates inside here. And the only thing we have on here is a little etched ECC83. So this is the European designation of a 12AX7. What else have we got? We've got something that says silver tone. And look at the plate structure. Now, neither one of these tubes has a manufacturing code that's visible. They were so smallly printed that it's probably the first thing that would rub off on these small tubes. In Europe, they were a lot more intelligent and they etched them into the glass. They're not always clearly visible, but in most cases they are. And look at that. The plates are identical. And that's a solid indicator, and they're testing in the same range. They're both 12AX7s. So Silvertone, I believe, was a brand of Sylvania, the same way Bugle Boy was a brand of Amperex. And of course, um, Amperex was a brand owned by Philips, which was a, in Europe was the huge electronics manufacturer. And in North America, RCA, Sylvania, GE, those were the big boys. There were a lot of other smaller manufacturers. Let's look at one more here. Here we've got a rebrand, a VSI 5814A. So that is an industrial 12AU7. But look at the plates. Let's compare the genuine Sylvania to so a 12AX7 to a 12AU7. The plates are identical on the outside and the wiring is identical from the plate to the pin. And I was talking about that earlier. If you want to compare the wiring, line, line up your gaps and then rotate it so that you can look at the wiring exactly in the same orientation. Look at that. The wiring is identical. There are a lot of other features to look at. The micas are important as well and we'll look at some of those in a minute. This is, a, this is a really good thing to keep in mind. Tube manufacturers would use the same tooling to make the same type of tube. So even though this is a 12AU7 and this is a 12AX7, the plate structure is identical. Inside, the way the, the wiring is done, the gauge of the winding wire, the spacing of it, the amount of it, that's all going to be different to generate a gain of 20 from a 12AU7 and a gain of 100 from a 12AX7, but externally they're the same. So whenever you see that gray corrugated plate on a small signal tube, you should be thinking Sylvania. At least that gives you a good hint as to what the manufacturer is. Okay, what's next? We've got some RCAs next. Got a big one and some small ones. RCA was really good at getting solid print on the base of their tubes and fairly good on the glass. So often it's intact. Now RCA was one of the huge manufacturers in the US. They invented some tubes, they held many, many patents, and they built a lot of tube types. So the chances are if a tube is labeled RCA, there's a very good chance that they built it. They did do some bulk buying and rebranding like everybody else, but there's a better chance that an RCA labeled tube in fact is an RCA. And one of the indicators that the 6SN7 is an RCA is RCA liked to build flat black plates. That was a thing for RCA. Sylvania liked to build small signal tubes with those corrugated gray plates. That was a thing for them. So that's a good indicator that you've got yourself genuine RCA. Now, here's some small ones. Let's find one that's clearly labeled, or as clearly as you're going to get on an older tube. 
So there you can see the orange RCA. Now this has got a clear dome, so the getter is somewhere else. So right underneath the RCA, they've got a U-shaped side getter, just a single one. And you can see they've got a flat gray plate with four rivets per plate and three ribs. Now, that's getting pretty close to identifying this as a clear top 12AX7. Or sorry, 12AU7. And these are really love tubes. Um, and I have quite a few of them in stock. And here's the hint that this is in fact for sure an RCA. RCA used this rectangular blocks right here with the corners knocked off and it says 12A, 12AU7A. Now other manufacturers would etch or print at the top like this in small numbers and letters, the tube type, but nobody other than RCA as far as I'm aware did, did that actual box. Let's look at another one. Here's another clear dome and it's got B and K on it. Now BK they were a high-quality electronics manufacturer. In fact, I have a, um, a DC uh, power supply that I use on my bench all the time to produce heater voltages for my builds. So we know BK, B and K didn't manufacture 12AU7s. So we can take a look at it. There's no manufacturing code on it, but look what we do have at the top. Made in the USA and 12AU7A inside that rectangular box. And we have a labeled RCA. We can do a direct comparison. Side getters are identical, clear domes identical. Let's look. Yeah, I don't think we've talked much about the top plates, the, um, sorry, the upper mica. The upper micas are slightly different, but they're very similar. It's probably a different generation of RCA or maybe at a different plant and we can look at the wiring of it as well between the plate and the bottom and that is very very similar so the B and K is in fact the rebranded RCA okay what's next another large manufacturer General Electric GE I'll start with the big octal so we've got a nice label GE was good at solid printing and this is an etched label here, so it's really intact, 6SN7GTB. And you probably can see the little dots at the bottom here underneath the label on the glass. And those little dots look like Braille. They're not elevated like Braille. But that's a strong indicator when you see that. As far as I know, G is the only one that used those dots. There's some sort of a manufacturing code. And do we have a manufacturing code? We do. We have a couple of codes. The manufacturing code is always three digits, 188-5. 188 is General Electric. Dash 5 is probably the plant, but I don't have a code for plants. If somebody does, put it up in the comments so that we can, we can all share it. Now, there's a date code on here, 5943. Now, this is a GTB, so 1959 would make sense. 43rd week of 1959. Often you have to figure out what the date code really means. It's usually just common sense. We know this is not a tube from 1943, most likely. It would have been a GTA. So now we've got the date of the tube as well. And GE loved to make flat gray plates. RCA did a lot of flat black plates. Now both manufacturers switch back and forth, so it's not it's not a firm and fast rule, but it's a good indicator that, in fact, that's a GE. Let's look at a couple of small signal tubes. So here's a real properly labeled GE, a lot of the prints disappearing. But at the top, they've got an acid etched 12AU7. I don't know if you can see that's very faint, but it's still clearly visible. So that's what a GE 12AU7 looks like, one of the versions, flat gray plate. It's got two slots, so two rivets, three ribs. And here we've got 
something called United Electronic. It's got a date code of 7749 or a manufacturing code. The, there's no actual manufacturing uh, plant or manufacturer number that makes sense. It could well be 1977 or it could be 1949. So we can, because there's no 77th week in the year, it's possible this is a 1977 tube for ninth week, but we don't know the plant. What we do have, though, is the plates. And the plates are identical to the GE. And the wiring is as well. The top getter is quite unique. It's very much a square. I don't know if you can see it up there. In this case, it's a round, but that would just mean that it was made at a different plant or in a different time. So we're not 100% sure that that, in fact, is a GE. So I would keep that in a bin of tubes that I'm not certain about. I know it's a 12AU7, and it tests like a 12AU7, but I'm not 100% sure. And often that's what's going to happen. So I have every tube type that I have in the store has a bin of tubes that are not finalized. But over time, as more tubes come in, I might be able to pick a few out of that miscellaneous pile and they become known tubes and identified and labeled so that I know what they are. Okay. So, now we've got something a little harder. So, new in the box, CBS Hytron. This is a 12SN7 GT. We've got a little label on top, it's hard to see. Now we know CBS both made tubes and rebranded tubes. And we've got a date code, 5409. So 1954, the ninth week, but we don't have a manufacturing code. We do have the plate structure to look at, but we're really not too certain whether this is really made at Hytron or whether this is a rebranded tube. But it just so happens that I've got a Westinghouse here. And it does have a manufacturing code, 337. Now this one's horizontal. It's probably from the early days of, it, of labeling tubes with the manufacturing code because virtually everything that came later on was vertical. But 337's Westinghouse, made in the USA, and if we compare the tubes, you can see it's clearly marked 12SN7GT on top, as well as this one here. The plates are identical. Let's see if I can get it focused. There you go. The getters, let's see if we can see the getters. They're down at the bottom, so a bottom getter, and it is D-shaped. They're identical, the wiring's identical. Knowing that Westinghouse made a lot of elevated T-plates, as part of their designs of the 6SN7s and 12SN7s, I'm almost certain that the CBS Hytron is in fact the rebranded Westinghouse. Now, these are both 12SN7s, and that that is something that is a really good thing to talk about. 6SN7s, vintage 6SN7s that are quality, new old stock or testing new old stock, they're getting harder and harder to find at reasonable prices. And it's only going to get worse. If you are rebuilding an amp that uses a 6SN7 or building a new design, think about changing the heater voltage. The only difference between these tubes is that the heater voltage is 12 volts instead of 6. And if you do that, for the same kind of money that you would buy a testing new old stock vintage tube as a 6SN7, you can probably get, for the same money, a brand new in the box 12 SN7. So it's still going to cost you money, but you're going to get a much better quality tube as a result. Okay. Well, that was fun. If you watch till the end, here are some discount codes to use as often as you want. Remember free shipping on an order of $150 or more. 
And this is Jim from Bells and More, signing off. Cheers, everyone.